Okay, so in this problem, we're going to write sets of quantum numbers, sets of four quantum numbers for electrons in the subshell 4D. Okay, so for a set of 4D orbitals. Okay, so the first thing let's do, let's just write down our notation for a set of four quantum numbers. That's going to be N, L, M sub L, and M sub S. Okay. And another thing that we need to do is figure out N and L for our set of 4D orbitals. Okay. So you should know by now that N is 4 and D is 2. Okay. So not D is 2, L is 2. All right. So L is 2. Okay. So that means we know these two right now. All right. So what we need to do is figure out the number of m sub l values and then write a plus one half version and a minus one half version for each one of those. Okay? So that's our strategy. That's how we're going to do this. Okay? So what are the possible m sub l values? All right? So possible m sub l. All right? So since L is 2, M sub L can be anywhere from negative L to positive L, separated by 1 or in going up by 1, an increment of 1. Okay, so M sub L can be negative 2, it can be negative 1, it can be 0, it can be 1, and it can be 2. Okay, so those are all the possible M sub L values. All right. So now we're ready to start writing sets of four quantum numbers for each one of these electrons. Okay? So starting with negative two, let's go ahead and fill in what we know for n, which is four, l is two, okay? Then we're going to put in m sub l, so that's negative two, and then we have a choice of plus one half or minus one half, so I'll just pick positive one half first, spin up first, there's the first set, okay? The only other possible set for m sub l equals minus two is negative one half for the spin, okay? So there's the second set. All right, let me write that just a little bit better. So negative two, negative one half, okay? All right, so that's that. All right, so let's go ahead and do the next set for negative one. Okay, so I'll do that down here. So again, nothing changes here. N is still four, L is still two because it's a 4D orbital, but now we're gonna put in negative one for our M sub L, and let's go ahead and do positive one half first, and then do the same thing here. So negative one and negative one half. Okay. So another thing to just think about while we're here is that this particular value for m sub l, that is a per, one of those d orbitals, okay? So this is one of them. Here's another one, okay? Because remember, the number of m sub l values gives us the number of orbitals in a set, okay? So, and look, each one of these two orbitals can hold two electrons, okay? So this is two electrons here and two electrons here, okay? So let's go ahead and write out the rest of the sets, okay? So let's write for zero. So again, nothing changes, four and two, zero. And then, because we're, we're using m sub l equals zero, plus one half, okay? Four, two, zero, minus one half. Okay, so that's that one. Let's do m sub l equals one. We're gonna get two more sets. Okay, four, two, one, and then minus one half. So that orbital can hold two electrons. All right, and then finally, this last guy, m sub l equals two. So we have four, two, two, one half and four, two, two, negative one half. 
Okay. All right, and so now if we count up all of these sets of four quantum numbers, then we're going to find out that we have ten of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which should make sense because there are five d orbitals in a set of d orbitals. So there are five d orbitals in a subshell, and each one can hold two electrons. So these are the quantum numbers for each of those electrons. Each electron is described by one of these sets, okay? And that's what the Pauli exclusion principle means is that each electron has to have its own set of four quantum numbers and we can see that each electron in a 4D orbital does indeed have its own set of four quantum numbers and none of them are the same.